You're tuned in to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. Hi, and welcome back to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast, where we are building connections, showcasing the impressive and inspiring movers and makers. Today's episode is brought to you by Refining Clean, a unique hand sanitizer from Health Fairs Direct. You can't get a better pedigree for hand sanitizer anywhere else. So today we're going to learn how implementing the pilot mindset philosophy into our everyday lives and business can really help us deal with change and challenges that we face on a daily basis. Nick Tarasio, the CEO of Ventura Air Services and a licensed jet pilot, joins us on this episode to share his passion for flying and how he believes that the training skills and lessons he learned as a pilot make him a strong leader who can navigate through times of a crisis. Nick, welcome to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. Thanks for having me here. Now, can you explain what your pilot mindset is and how really following that has helped you and Ventura be so successful over the years while managing and overcoming challenges? Sure. So I I say that pretty much everything I learned about life and business, I learned in the cockpit of an airplane. Uh, At a very early age, I started flight training, became a professional pilot by 19. And, you know, I always think about when you think of like the miracle on the Hudson, for example, what is it about Sully's mindset? How did he do that thing? And the reality is all pilots train for that. We all train for doing something that seems from the outside to be a miracle when it's not, it's actually what we're supposed to do. So those same principles that came from the cockpit are, uh, I kind of distilled them out for myself to say these are life principles. The first one, which is the most important is no pilot ever takes off without having a destination in mind. And I think about how many times in our life we just say, well, whatever, I'm just gonna get moving and I'll figure it out as I go. That is very counter to us. It's always have a vision for where you're going. Uh, The second thing that I think is really important is, you know, have you ever seen that meme that was like success is not a straight line, it's more of like this squiggly line that goes like this? For pilots, we say, look, if we're doing a flight plan, let's look at terrain and weather and all the potential risks and let's make a line that goes around that. So our flight plan is based on the reality of the risks that we're dealing with. Uh, And I think it's the same thing for a success plan or any kind of business plan. Uh, And I mean, it goes on and on, but essentially when you're on your flight plan, monitor your critical instruments, your KPIs in your business, make small adjustments. Don't go way off the course because you're paying attention to the wrong things. And it, I mean, it goes on and on. There's a lot of stuff there that, 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 that I've distilled out, but those are kind of the three keys. Oh, I can see those are probably the most important ones too. Absolutely. So actually have you and like Ventura, have you felt the hit from COVID like the other major airlines? Um, I mean, we're very fortunate in that we have not been affected in that way. I mean, for April, we were down 75%. I think the airlines were down 95% or 90%. Uh, Right now, we're back to about, uh, we're within 18% now of what we were uh, last year in in the same month. So our business is really helped by the fact that the airlines are suffering because there are still people that have means that are saying, I don't want to get on an airline. I don't want to be around people that could potentially get me sick. And I still need to go to my third vacation home or whatever it is. So, uh, and I'm being a little bit facetious, but there are people that are truly saying, look, I have the means, I don't wanna be where the hotspots are. So they go to Florida, Florida becomes a hotspot, off to Montana they go. Um, And we help facilitate that. But we also do a lot of organ transport for the New York hospitals. So that business really, it slowed down a little bit when the hospitals retooled for dealing with COVID, uh, but we're still doing a lot of those, you know, a lot of those life-saving flights right now. So for that piece, we've, we've kept that business pretty steady. So if I want to go to my non-existent third vacation home in Montana, right? Do I just make an appointment with you guys? Do I have to be a member? No, I mean, I, our business model is more like a taxi service where you say, hey, I need to go from point A to point B. Give me a quote. What is that? And then we'll take you there. And it could be as little as two hours. We've had sometimes people call us and say, I need to fly in two hours. You go, great. We'll have the plane there ready to go for you. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And how many people can you fit in these planes? Is there a different sizes? So the plane behind me, for example, that's a, that would be 10 seats generally. Um, we have some smaller jets that are seven or eight seats. And then if someone really needed a Boeing 737 that the sports teams fly on, we'll get you one of those too. So we're not limited to just our fleet. We'll get you anything you need. Yeah, I don't have that many friends to add on my, my, my plane. So it'll probably just be like the eight or nine or 10, you know, never know. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're being you're being modest. Oh yeah, no, you're right. Like I don't know how to have a house party these days because then you gotta invite this person, and then well, how do you not invite like you know Sally and Jackie? And if you're inviting that, how do you not invite Joe and John? It's very difficult. So, exactly. So I totally get it. That's why and, I have a fleet of planes. <laughs> so how does the experience work with you guys? Like I come, I make the appointment. Can you walk us through a typical somebody just booked you for a flight? 
Yeah. So again, someone will call us and say, for example, I'll give you a real example that came up. Someone said, look, my family member needs to get to a hospital for, uh, for an operation. And I'm afraid because of their immunity right now, I'm afraid to put them on an airliner. So they called and said, we need to do that. Within two hours, we came back. Actually, I think within an hour, we came back with the options and said, here's a bunch of different options to get you from Florida to Boston in this case. Uh, they pick out what they want. They select that thing. We run the airplane. We go pick them up. And there's really not a lot to do. I mean, we go through the like a security screening when they get on, make sure that they're safe. We check their their, their forehead temperature to make sure that they're not flying with COVID. Uh, and we deliver them to where they need to go. That's pretty awesome. And then you just do wait there? It depends. Sometimes people will say, we want you to stick around for a return flight. Other times it's just one way. And then we leave them and we go off to do the next flight. Okay. So if you flew me from here in New Jersey to, I don't know, I don't want to go to Montana. Let's say I'm going to go to Texas. I'm going to go to the South, right? Can I call you back to bring me home like Absolutely. in a week? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Just yeah, we're, we're really do stuff. Like there's some interesting stuff out there because what'll happen is imagine someone is flying down to Texas a week later and they're, they, their plane's just sitting there that has nothing to do. We'll actually try to get you that empty leg to get you back to New York. So you're, you're really picking up excess inventory in the market and we're able to give you pretty steep discounts on private flying. So we've had people going to Florida in a private jet for 7,500 bucks, $6,000 and that's eight seats. So when you look at the economics of it, it's really not that much money. Oh, I got I got friends. I'll find some peeps. AKA well, I'll just go. bring my brother. He'll be the one that will definitely dish that out. <laughs> 100% and be bougie. And I love every second of that, don't get me wrong. Yeah, there'll be so, Instagram be, photos, I'm sure. For sure. You know what I did see? I saw this article. It's totally related but unrelated at the same time. I saw this article that people could just like rent like a jet just to take a picture. In Russia. Okay, so it is in Russia. You know what I'm talking it's in, about. It's in Russia, yeah. Oh, you, the, the more you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> what actually makes Ventura's brand and approach biz, uh, to business really different than other sectors, like your competitors? Yeah, so um, I actually wrote a book that kind of touches on that. It's called Own Your Own Plane. It costs less than you think. And I think our approach is really different where if you remember private jets are all about lux, right? Like exactly what you're saying, like I want Instagram photos, I wanna show off, this is so cool, look how, like look at my lifestyle. We really take more of a high utility approach. So we say you don't need the newest toy, you need the one that will give you the maximum capability of achieving most of your missions. So if you say, look, 80% of the time I fly to Florida, great, well don't buy a heavy jet, you don't need that, you're just going to Florida. So let's find the most effective way to get you into the machine that's gonna achieve your mission. And that's why we do like the hospital flights. It's a utility flight. Someone needs to get from point A to point B effectively to save a life. Uh, so it's really just been more of luxury is for people that wanna spend money like water, let them do it, that's fine. There's plenty of people that are just saying, give me the newest and best. We say you can have the same experience for a fraction of the cost. And that's always been our approach. So it's a lot of education. A lot of people don't know enough about jets. Like your questions, like how does this even work? We spend a lot of time saying like, if you don't know anything about the industry, it's a scary industry to navigate. You're like, well, how does safety work? What if a plane's 20 years old? Does that mean something? Am I being irresponsible? So our whole thing is education and utility is really the way that, 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 that we try to approach this. Now this is so random, but like, do you get a flight attendant or is it just a pilot? So the plane behind me does, some of our planes have flight attendants and some of them do not. So some of them you have to, you know, you bring, we, we, we could get you catering, but you'll have to serve yourself. So is it B-Y-O-B, like I can bring my own champagne? Yeah, you can bring your own stuff for sure. Nice, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, can, again, we could have like, lobster. We could have lobster on every seat ready for you when you get there, whatever you need. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> now, do you think it is a good time for somebody to invest in a plane right now? Uh, amazingly so. Believe it or not, that uh, we're seeing a lot of planes are trading about 15 to 20% below their market value because there's, again, this is a weird time in the market. Um, but more importantly, we're really bullish on the fact that with the airlines not being able to spool up potentially for the next three to five years, there's rumors that United may go bankrupt. There's a lot of concerns that the airline efficiency will go away. We're gonna see a lot of struggle for travelers in that space. So people are turning more and more to charter. And if you own a charter, if, if you own a plane and give it to a company like us to charter it when you're not using it, you're really gonna see a, a pretty good return on that investment. And there's also crazy tax benefits in 2020 where uh, if you buy an airplane this year, you can depreciate the entire value of the plane. So if someone made a million dollars this year in profit, they could buy a million dollar plane and have zero taxes to pay. Tax I laws. See that. Tax laws are, uh, uh, again, they're an effective tool. 
And you know, again, it's it's for business use. It's not for personal use, but for for businesses that have a need to travel, uh, it's an amazing time to learn about the space and try to understand some of the tools available. And again, these are people have this idea that it really is just a bunch of people running around on you know like living this lux life. It's actually a lot of businesses trying to be effective at making deals happen. You know, trying to grow their business, trying to get edge against competition. The reality of the private jet space is way less sexy than it seems from the outside. <laughs> I mean, you're still talking to me and it still sounds very appealing on this side of the Zoom camera. I'm not going to lie. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so if I did like buy a plane and I, when you said that you can charter them and stuff like that, does that mean I could buy a plane? I can leave it with you guys. You can use it for other flights. Yeah. So the way we do it is real simple is that let's say you bought a plane and you say, Nick, I'm going to use the plane 30 days a year. Great. I'll take it for the rest of the time and I'll charter it and I'll pay you for the use of the plane. And we can offset pretty much all of your overhead. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm paying off my roof right now and a car, but give me a couple of years. I may come back to you on that offer. There you go. There you go. Yeah. You're right. It does sound a lot more appealing when you put it in that way, because I would have never known that you could even do it. I thought that if I bought this plane, it, it's got to sit there and just I'm only using it five, seven, eight times a year. Exactly. And that's, you know, from that aspect, it's treating the aircraft as an investment versus a cost center. And there's ways to do that. We've got some really unique programs where we take on all the risk of the plane. So we'll say you buy it, you get the tax benefit. We'll pay for everything else. And when you fly, you just pay the, the hourly operating cost for the plane for yourself. So it's stuff like that. And, and again, the kicker is people have no idea what planes cost because of rap videos. You know, it's like you read about like uh, Jay-Z buying a whatever $60 million plane or someone who's, you know, all these people that are buying these expensive airplanes. I don't know if this is going to work, but the plane behind me, what do you think that plane costs? Uh, easily like $100,000 minimum? $100,000. you are the only person that ever went the wrong direction. It's four and a half million dollars. Oh, I was going, you, you made it said that because I, I was just sure how low or how high it was going. That was good there. though. That was good. You totally hustled me on that. No, it's like brand new planes, like the plane behind me is about $25 million brand new. I got that in my bank. I'll see you tomorrow. Exactly. But what's interesting is we buy them when they're used and we got that plane for in the $4 million range. We've bought jets as low as $300,000. And uh, it just depends on the certain strategy that, 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 you know, people don't expect that. Generally, business owners are like, I'm not even almost at my jet money. I don't have my Oprah money yet. Like you don't need Oprah money. You just need a smart strategy and, and buying the right assets. So again, we really help steer people through that process. How has your creative side, because I know you are a singer and a songwriter as well, how has that really helped you build and build your company and become so successful? So a couple things. I mean, I think that selling an airplane to someone and selling charter is about selling a dream and selling a vision. And it's really in the same way, like when I think of songwriting, songwriting is about creating something that people connect to emotionally. And if it doesn't connect, it's garbage. Even like the best technical songs no one cares about. So I think about the business in the same way is that we sell a dream. We sell someone seeing their life, the emotional experience of being able to spend more time with their family, get home for dinner, not have to be out on the road. Even it's just the prestige you feel when you say, I'm trying to do a business deal. I want to take my prospect on the flight with me to show them that this is the kind of company we are. We really take care of our people. I have to sell that vision. And I think everything is a performance. Um, and the other thing is that in the same way, music is a tool for connection. Airplanes are a tool for connection. So I think that that aspect of understanding, um, just in general, people think airplanes are, uh, you know, these, these, again, these fancy things and it's like an abstract concept, but in reality, it's just a paintbrush for creating the life you want. It's just another tool in your tool set to create the life you want. And, uh, and I think music gave me that clarity to understand that business airplanes are all a creative pursuit and it's about how do you apply them? I like that a $24 million airplane pursuit little paintbrush. Four million. Four million. What a deal. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Honestly, because if, some people buy houses for that much anyway. So at that point, and, and then the fact that you get to keep it there with you and you can possibly make some money back off of that, you may eventually break even. So it, it, you're right. It is a very good investment if you have the money to like, you know, upfront it and stuff like that. Exactly. Now, how did you get involved actually in the Young Presidents Organization? Um, so I first joined a group called Entrepreneurs Organization, which was for uh, slightly smaller businesses. And as the company grew, I realized that we are a very, very complex company. We are a maintenance facility, an avionics shop. We have our own real estate, like the, the entire hangar facility is ours. 
uh, we're, you know, the charter company, we're a sales arm. So we have the complexity of a $50 million business at about a, a fourth of the financial reality. So I said, I need to be around people that are running $100 million businesses, $200 million companies and figure out how does a CEO lead at that level? It's a different experience than the owner operator. And I truly can't be getting involved in the weeds of the company at all based on the fact that I have to keep so many plates spinning at the same time and really trust the team to do so. So it was a different mindset. And I said, whatever it takes, I want to be around people like that. And YPO is probably the most prestigious global organization that has those kind of people with that kind of mindset. Are you actually still flying the planes or are you just, like you said, step back and doing all like the business CEO stuff? I only fly for fun. I retired from, from, from doing it professionally. I actually found that my best contribution to the company and the team was to not be in the air and unreachable. Uh, except again, I, I fly for fun. I take friends up. I'll even take people that I'm close to just like I'm flying today. I'm going to Bar Harbor, Maine um, for me and with some friends. So it's, it's just a different aspect. So I love flying, but I was careful to say flying for other people. I really want to reserve that for people who want to be full-time dedicated pilots. And I really should be focused more on running the business. But if you went to Bar Harbor, you can pick up the lobster and bring it back. I will. <laughs> I will indeed. There'll be lobster coming home. You can reach out to Nick or book a flight at Ventura by visiting ventura.aero. You can email them at info at ventura.aero or you can give them a call at 800-597-0866. Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Great speaking with you. Now that's a wrap on another episode of the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. I'm your host, Lenore. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss one. More at brandambassadorselect.com and we will see you next time.